Continuing our journey into the layers of scare that takes our haunt to the best it could be, let's look at layer five, lighting. Lighting is one of the most powerful, but least appreciated elements in setting up a haunt. I've been one of those haunters that just gave it a cursory thought, hey, there's a spotlight on the house, right? Well, yeah, I was happy with it until I started touring professional haunts. Wow. <laughs> Before going on these tours, I assumed there was tons and tons of high quality props and decor. And there are, but not in all the rooms. How do they make up for it? Lighting. Here's an example. A pro haunt's room scarily lit. And with the house lights on. Yes, it's hard for us home haunters to match pro haunt's budgets, but we now know we can use lighting tricks to sell the scare. Lighting using colors punches the tot right in the candy basket. Haunting emotion grabbing colors. These effects aren't painted this way, they're lit this way. Now which colors should we use? Emotions, mood, and setting are tightly coupled with a color. So with that in mind, we can telegraph what we were trying to set up in the room. Blue for ethereal and mysterious. Red for violence, gore, fire, or in this one, intensity. Green for strange and unnerving. Yellow for savage. White for shock. Black for evil and powerful. Purple is exotic and unnatural. I mean, we can attach an emotion to every color. We can even combine colors. Yellow and green together is good for a sick and twisted feel. When a haunter combines a fantastic room filled with great props and adds a layer of colored light, it reaches for the sublime. The more vivid the color, the more intense the mood. No wonder we Halloweeners love those deep, vivid colors. We are, after all, trying to set an emotional mood, and we need it at setting 11. Color isn't the only secret to the magic of lighting. In fact, there are four. Color, brightness, distribution, and movement. Now that we've already talked about color, let's look at brightness. How bright or intense is this light going to be? This is important to consider because contrast is as powerful as color. If we use a bright small light, that will create dramatic shadows. This shows another aspect we can use to adjust brightness and add awesome shadows. Filter the light through something like the slats in the wall. Even easier, we can also use what's called cookies or gobos. We can make these as easily as a prop. Plenty of how-to videos on YouTube. Moving on to distribution. Where are the light sources going to be in the room? There are four types of light distribution. General, task, decorative, and focal. General lighting is used as the overall lighting in the room. When we also use task, decorative, and focal lighting, well, now we are helping to tell the story. General lighting is what replaces the sunlight in a room. It's the overall light level. The big question here is, do we even want to use general lighting? Nothing kills terrific shadows faster than general lighting. There is some general lighting that is useful, though. Large strobe lights, black lights, fire water illusions. Those are types of general lighting used in a haunt. Like we talked about in the previous layer, accents, task lighting helps tell the story. If there's a desk lamp or a TV in the room, simply turn it on. If the light's too bright, we can dim it down, but turn it on. They are important tricks that add reality. We can have a lot of fun with decorative lighting. Examples are light washes that help show texture or blood on the wall, moonlight streaming through the overhead branches, sconces on the wall, or sewer lights down a tunnel. Candles are powerful mood setters as well as being decorative. And we can't forget silk flame lights for those fire effects. A powerful tool in our scare lighting arsenal is focal lighting. This is where we can force the tots to look where we want them. For example, if we want to focus their attention on an area away from the scare ready to spring behind them, light it. Also notice how the puppet is lit from the side. That side lighting helps showcase the tiny form. It's a bad habit when we use straight on lighting. It flattens the object and makes it not that very interesting. Think of how we can reveal the object. Use an up light to make the face appear even more monster-like, grotesque, or even taller. 
Put the side light up high and it will reveal the top side of the head and the upper torso. Good for muscular chesty monsters. A pin spotlight can be used to just light the scariest part of the prop. Another great focal light is the use of backlighting. This will make our proper actor stand out from the background and seem even closer. We can also place the backlight from where the monster is attacking. Additionally, try to use several color layers of backlighting. It will make the room appear much deeper. Finally, let's try to use a lot of contrast and hard light. Dramatic is the goal here. Look at what sharp contrast can do to heighten the fear in this scene. Okay, we've decided on the color of light, how bright it'll be, what type of light it is, and now the final question. Do we want the light to move or change? What I mean is, do we want it to strobe or dim, change color or flicker? We can make a somewhat scary prop truly come to life using light movement. When the lighting is alive, it will make a static prop look alive also. A strobing light is excellent for making unmoving objects appear to be moving. If the object is already moving, <laughs> it's gonna make it appear to move faster. Dimming or brightening light adds drama. Add color changing and that helps tell the story. DMX lighting is a go-to for that. Flickering light makes fake candles look real, flashing white floodlights in the graveyard look like lightning, and fluttering silk looks like fire. A simple rotating beacon light can give a sense of alarm or put us in a prison yard. And we can't forget about lasers. Combining lasers with fog, mwah. <laughs> Moving light livens up a room. Heck, discos are centered around a mirror ball. Before we leave this subject, let's talk about a relatively new lighting tool for us haunters, mini LED spotlights. These tiny little lights are becoming a haunter's dream. This little thing houses one colored LED light and can be put anywhere. Look at that fantastic saturated color. It's utterly brutal. The glass in the aquariums are diffusing the light and that's something to try to keep in mind. If we've got glass containers, try to light it. It'll just rock. When it's pointed at an object, sweet. Remember we were just talking about the power of shadows and contrasts? Look at the drama one little doll sitting on a shelf has. Unlike incandescent lighting, LEDs have a limited beam of light. That's why we see specs on LEDs mentioning 30 degree beam angle. That's not a drawback. Small beam angles create those sharp light edges. It's just perfect. They're also low voltage, 12 volts. We can hook 60 of them up on one power adapter. Lightning is a powerful and honestly overlooked weapon that we can use to take a home haunter's limited budget and amp up the scares. Color is emotion, brightness can scare, distribution tells the story, and movement can make it come alive. Thanks again for spending time with me discovering the seven layers of scare.